forgot to print off sheets of hymns, and we're not using hymn books. I use a hymn book, and we're going to sing Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. I think I sing that often enough that we should know the verses. Don't depend on me to keep you right. Follow the, follow the organ, and uh, we'll make it. And we're also broadcasting tonight because we feel that it's an opportunity for people who, who aren't able to come out, some of the folk who aren't feeling well or just don't want to come in to, to a company of people are watching at home, so we've made that option for them with the idea that uh, if we have to do this more going forward, they can use this as a family worship time. And if, if it comes to the point where we're not able to have prayer meetings, we'll try and do this on a regular basis each week so that if you're at home, you can tune in and we'll still, I'll still bring a word and then you can use that time afterwards to pray as a family or individually. But we try and keep that link with the congregation. So if there are those who have tuned in, we welcome you also in the Saviour's name. And we trust this little time we have around the word will be a blessing to you as well. And encourage your heart as we face these challenging times uh, right across the world and in our own province as well. So we're going to sing, Jesus keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. And as we sing the verses, the other verses will come to you, I hope. And uh, we'll make a joyful noise unto the Lord either way. So we'll stand as we sing. Let me say a word of welcome to you for coming tonight. I really appreciate that. I know these are very, very challenging times. Uh, a lot of uncertainty as to what to do to do right. And um, we, we come in here so you can spread out a little bit more and um, not have to sit just so tight if you feel that a meter rule is better. So if you want to do that, feel free to do that as well. Plenty of seats here near the front. And um, we're glad to see each one. And may the Lord bless our time together. So we will stand, we will sing this hymn, Jesus keep me near the cross. And then we'll open with a word of prayer.
the Lord together in a prayer. And we pray for his blessing on our time together tonight to come around the word and come to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the opportunity we have to gather together in thy name tonight. We thank thee for the Saviour at thy right hand, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. We thank thee for his exaltation at thy right hand tonight, and he is there as our advocate, as our mediator, our friend, our redeemer. Amen. We thank thee for the one who is the pastor of our souls, the great shepherd of his people. And Lord, we thank thee tonight that thou hast told us to cast all our care upon thee, for thy care is for us. And we bless thee tonight for the opportunity we have to gather together in thy house, the one with the other, to sing thy praise, to turn to thy word, and Lord, to find instruction and encouragement for our hearts in these days. We think, Lord, of the awful situation across the world, the fear, the concern that many have. We think tonight of those who have lost loved ones through the virus, and we pray for those homes and those families, that, Lord, thou would remember them in thy grace and in thy mercy. We think of those who are not well tonight and facing anxious times, waiting for results and waiting for help in various ways. And we ask, Lord, tonight that thy hand will be upon them too. We think of our own congregation. We think, Lord, of those who are perhaps with weak health already, anxious and fearful. And we pray tonight, Lord, that thou would encourage their hearts, even at home. And as they would take time to read thy word and seek thee in prayer, that thou would encourage them and strengthen them. We think of the psalmist when he said that we could wait upon the Lord and he would strengthen our hearts. Yeah. And I say on the Lord. And Father, we pray tonight, even as we ponder thy word, that thou would come and graciously minister unto us. Yeah. We think of our boys and girls and the changes that will come into their routine with schools being closed. We think of our young people at college and university, some away from home. We pray for them tonight, that Lord, thou would remember them and be with them and families that are anxious for their young people away from home. Draw near to them as well, we pray. We thank thee for the nurses and doctors that are seeking to help and to guide in so many ways at this time. And we pray, Lord, for them that thou would keep thy hand upon them for good, keep them in health and strength. We pray for those in authority over us. We think of our prime minister or those who will be advising him at this time and the cabinet members, or we, we think of uh, politicians all across the nation tonight, and we, we ask that thou would give them wisdom in the midst of these changing and challenging times. Uh, Lord, you told us to pray for those in authority over us, and we bring them before thee tonight. And Lord, we ask that thou would, in thy providence and in thy purposes, yeah. Lord, that thou would give help to thy church at this time, give us Amen. grace to minister, for those in great need, we thank thee for the power of the gospel, for the hope of the gospel. And Lord, we ask even tonight that thou would help us to take great comfort in that and to remember thy people, to remember thy work all across the world. So be with us tonight. Remember our missionaries too. We think of them in various places and perhaps anxious in regard to developments where they are. We pray tonight that would strengthen them and encourage them and Lord, we pray that they might know that back here at home there are those who are upholding them in prayer. So be with us tonight. Bless our time around the word. And as we have a season of prayer, Lord, remember that too. Bless those who are watching tonight. We pray that at homes and Lord, wherever they might be, that thy word would be an encouragement. And Lord, that even they would take time to pray and seek thy face as well. So be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're turning to Psalm 46 tonight. Psalm 46, and we'll read together from the opening verse, in verse 1. We say, We welcome you along to our prayer time in a different format tonight. And we'll try to keep just an hour, a little shortly after 9 o'clock. And um, let me assure you also that if I can be of any help to you in these days, or family members, those who are watching as well, if I can be of any help, I'm still very happy to, to visit as much as possible, as much as that is able to be done. Feel free to call, or to text, or to email, or to get in touch with me anyway. And if you know of others who would 
uh, need help, then get, let them get in touch with me, or you get in touch with me on their behalf. If there's anything we can do to minister at this time, we'd be very keen to do that in the Lord's name. But let's read from Psalm 46, and we'll read together from verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Amen. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts tonight for Jesus' sake. No exaggeration, as you know, that we're living in desperate times, very difficult times across the world and also in our own nation. I drove home from a meeting in Balmina on Monday night and this is the part of the Prime Minister's press conference that had taken place earlier that afternoon. And he spoke of drastic times and drastic measures and drastic actions. And we understand that he was announcing a whole raft of restrictions to try and control the pandemic that is sweeping across the world at this time. We're very aware of the dangers that the virus poses and most of us have never witnessed anything like this in our lifetime before. Other generations, and when you talk to those who are in their late 80s or early 90s, they can remember back to the war time and different flus and influenzas and other times of national crises. And they can remember back to what happened in those days. But for my generation, and perhaps for many of us here tonight, this is the first time we have seen anything on this kind of scale. The numbers are, are staggering, 200,000 people, 8,000 deaths recorded. And I understand that many people are afflicted by the flu every year, but this is different. And there's panic in various places, and you understand the situation with the economy, with employment, with schools now being closed, so many things taking place. The health service at breaking point in so many ways. And the elderly being told to stay at home for anything up to 12 or 16 weeks in the days ahead. Unprecedented. That's the word that has been used often, over and over again. Unprecedented, at least in this generation of ours. And there have been other times of national crises, I know. If you look down through the history of the nation. I have a book in my library at home a series of addresses by a Puritan minister by the name of Thomas Vincent. In that book he details events in London between 1665 and 1666 during the time of the Great Plague. And the Great Plague was the last major epidemic of the bubonic plague to occur in England. And Vincent records that at the height of that epidemic in London the death rate was rising by a thousand per week. And he was fearful, people were fearful at that time, regarding the numbers of those who were dying. And he writes in the book, The plague now increaseth exceedingly, and fears there are amongst us that while there will not be enough alive to bury the dead, and that the city of London will now be quite depopulated by this plague. They were so fearful that there would be more people dead than alive in the city of London. The Great Plague at that time, estimated numbers, 100,000 people died during those two years. Almost a quarter of London's population in 18 months. During that time of great trouble, many ministers left London and moved out to the country to try and stay 
healthy and try to escape death. Other ministers decided to stay in London uh, to minister to those who were there. There was very little preaching done in many months of those years. However, there were some, some ministers who opted to try and stay and minister to the sick and to the dying. And they cried out, those people who were not well, they cried out for spiritual help. And ministers were able to go and minister to them in the gospel. Pamphlets were thrown around the streets of London, advertising churches that were now open to be rented because their ministers had gone to the country. And unlicensed ministers took up that opportunity. And they went to those churches and they preached the gospel. And at times, many, many people thronged in to hear the word of God, even at that time. Vincent in that book tells of a story of a mother that he met carrying her, her daughter. Um, the girl, little girl had died and she was going to bury her daughter by herself. There wasn't a man living in the home. There wasn't an undertaker available to bury the little girl. And the mother had to do that herself. Another man who became terribly dizzy with the plague died within a short time of Vincent meeting him. It's a very sobering book of how men were able to minister and how Christians were able to minister even in times of great trouble. And these are challenging times for us too. We're not facing that kind of situation in regard to not being able to reach people. We have so many electronic means now that we can still uh, meet together and encourage each other in the Lord. And so tonight as we think about what we're facing as a nation, my mind turned to the theme here of, of Christian conduct in the midst of the coronavirus. What should we be thinking of? What should we be pondering in our minds as we think about God's word? And just a number of things, practical things tonight that I want to draw your attention to, keeping in mind the words of the psalm that we've been reading. First of all, Christians should have faith in God in all our various circumstances. The world is in a state of panic. And whenever we may think of it, multitudes are nervous and anxious and concerned and troubled. Many of them do not know God and therefore they do not know to turn to him and to trust him in times like this. But the Christian is not like that. In Psalm 70 or 91 verse 2, the psalmist says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And that psalm is dealing with all kinds of pestilence, all kinds of dangers that we're facing God's people. And the child of God can cast his care upon the Lord. We read here from Psalm 46, and God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And as believers, we can come and we can cast our care upon the Lord. We can, we can trust the God of heaven. In the midst of all the changing circumstances, in the midst of all the news conferences that bring different aspects to this and different changes to advice and guidelines to this, we can trust God. And when we think of that statement, trusting God, we understand that God is in control. He is sovereign. God is sovereign over all the affairs of all the nations of the world. Yeah. He does all things well. He makes no mistakes. Therefore, we can trust him. With all the circumstances of our individual lives, with the lives of our families, with the life of the congregation, with the life of our community and our desire to minister to others, God is in control. And the God who is in control cares for his people. Even in the midst of terrible trouble. God does not suspend his care <coughs> of us. His love remains the same. And since he is in control and he cares for his people, he gives grace to us in times of need. He either gives grace to keep us from the virus or he gives us grace if we were to contract the virus. But God gives grace to his people. And no doubt there will be believers who will be affected with this all across the world. But God will give grace to them also. He promises his grace is sufficient for us. 
And his grace is sufficient for us, not just when things are going well, not just when life is smooth and easy and comfortable for us, but he gives grace when life is difficult and when we face challenges and when things are uncertain from a human perspective. God gives grace to his people. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee when Paul was suffering from a thorn in the flesh. He prayed three times. The Lord would remove that. And, and the Lord did not remove that from him. But he promised him something even more important. He promised him grace that would be sufficient for his circumstances. And believer, he will do the same for us. He will give grace to us in our time of need. He has a purpose. He has a purpose in all of these things. And in all of the trials and troubles and tribulations that we face, God has a purpose. In Job 13, verse 15, Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And you know that Job faced some horrendous trials in his life, yet he was able to trust in God. God moves in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea. He rides upon the storms and deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill. He treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. Even in times like this. So how do we react to all that's taking place around us? We should endeavour to entrust our lives and every aspect of them to our sovereign God and rest in him. But there's a second thing I think we should do, and that is that we should pray for a spiritual awakening in the nation. Amen. During the days of the Great Plague in London, 1665-1666, Thomas Vincent remarked, Now the atheists believe there is a God. He went on to say, now there is such a vast concourse of people in the churches where these ministers are to be found, that they cannot many times come near to the pulpit door for the press, but are forced to climb over the pews to them. And such a face is now seen in the assemblies as seldom was seen before in London. Such eager, such open ears, such greedy attention, as if every word would be eaten which dropped from the mouth of ministers. People <coughs> suddenly had an interest in spiritual things. There was a spiritual awakening, at least to some degree, at that time. People were awakened to their spiritual need. They were facing all kinds of calamities at that time. And yet this became a priority for them. Other things were set to the side. Things of time, things of sense, material things, mundane things, temporal things were just set to the side and spiritual things became of the utmost importance. They recognized their sinfulness before God. They recognized the certainty of judgment, the brevity of life, the necessity of salvation through Christ. They recognized the urgency of repentance and faith. They were, they were awakened to their spiritual needs. And we should pray for that in our nation tonight too. For years, our society, and this is true right across the world, for years, our society has play, played fast and loose with God. There has not been much interest in spiritual things. There's been a carelessness about the souls of men and women. The laws of God have been discarded. Not much interest in spiritual matters, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I believe that we ought to pray tonight that God would move in power and send a spiritual awakening that will turn this nation upside down. Now, affliction itself doesn't do that. Pharaoh dealt with, with plagues in the land of Egypt, but he hardened his heart. He hardened his heart. He asked, who is God that I should obey him? So the presence of Trouble and affliction and tribulation doesn't always result in people turning to the Lord. But we ought to pray tonight that it does in this case. That there will be an interest 
in spiritual matters. We should pray for preachers to bring God's message in the power of the Holy Spirit. If ever our nation needed God's messengers with God's message, it is now. So I covet your prayers, and I know the ministers in our denomination would covet the prayers of God's people, that we would have the mind of God as to what to say in these days. We have the message of God, and as opportunity is afforded to us, and, and we may find that there's wider opportunity to bring the word, that God would burden our hearts and we would preach Christ in all his fullness. So let's do what Paul urged the Thessalonians to do when he said, brethren, pray for us. Pray that ministers and men who have opportunity to preach, our elders, our missionaries, wherever they, they have opportunity, even God's people, wherever, wherever we are, that God would give us a word in season at this time. Pray for a new interest in spiritual things, people who have been careless up to now, but suddenly be troubled and suddenly anxious about these matters. And let's pray for the Spirit to apply the word of God to the salvation of precious souls. We should pray for a spiritual awakening in the nation. The third thing we should do, very quickly, is we should demonstrate the love of Christ to others. This presents us with an opportunity to serve. To serve among God's people, to bear one another's burdens, to seek to encourage those who feel they cannot come out and assemble with God's people, those perhaps who are not well and anxious at home, we have an opportunity to minister to them by praying for them, by assuring them of our concern for them, to encourage them in the Lord. It's an opportunity to love our neighbour as ourself, to minister to unsaved people, to minister to family members, just to think of others, to call them, to encourage them, to take care, if we can, of their <coughs> needs and matters that come to their attention. Perhaps they're not able to do something for themselves. If we can do that in very practical terms, not, not throwing caution to the wind, but seeking to help others as much as we possibly can. You see the world at times and some within the world acting very greedily and selfishly just now as if it's all dependent upon them and self-importance takes over and self-centeredness takes over. That ought not to be with the Christian. Christ gave himself for us. So may we be saved from that spirit of selfishness and let's seek to minister and demonstrate the love of Christ as much as we possibly can to each other and to the wider community that we might be able to bear good testimony for Jesus Christ. One last thing, we should rejoice in the glorious hope of the gospel. We're facing disease, some cases death, we think of those cases around the world and even in the British mainland in recent days the number just seems to keep rising. It makes us think surely that life at best is very brief. We're not here forever. But for the Christian, this is not the end. For the unsaved, it's not the end. But for us who know Christ, we have a building not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. And therefore we look at this world not as our, our home, not as our final home. We're just really passing through here. And therefore we can keep our eye upon eternity. And what we have in Jesus Christ and what Christ has purchased for us by his blood on the cross, he has prepared a place for us. He told his disciples that just before he went to Calvary. And heaven is guaranteed because of what Christ has accomplished on that center cross. And therefore while our, our minds invariably turn to the difficulties that our nation are facing, is facing. And we think of those who are in critical health issues right now. The child of God can rejoice in what we have in Jesus Christ, in the glorious hope of the gospel. 
And that's a message we can bring to the unseen. That there is hope in Christ and in Christ alone. And even in the midst of sickness, in the midst of affliction and difficulties and so many changes on so many different levels. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. So we have much to pray over. We have much to rejoice in. We have much to look to the Lord for. And as we come to prayer tonight, may the Lord help us to seek his face in prayer. So may the Lord bless these few thoughts to our hearts tonight. And help us now as we spend a little time in prayer together. Let's say we'll try to keep to shortly after nine o'clock tonight. We do have a session meeting. We have many things to think through in regard to services going forward, the, the work that needs to be done, things that we need to think through. And so we do appreciate so many being able to come tonight. And I'll give you further updates on the WhatsApp group or the email, whatever means we have to, to contact the Lord's people, contact the congregation. We'll keep doing that as much as we can. We will try to keep with the children's bulletin as well for the boys and girls. Um, we'll send that out by email so parents can help them with that at home and um, use that as a means of keeping them connected with various things as well. Those are things we're going to work through a little later tonight in our session meeting. So do, do pray for us as well. Pray for our presbytery officers and the executive committee. They, they meet tomorrow and I know they will cover prayer in regard to that. Pray for our missionaries tonight. Pray for the congregation here. Pray for those who are elderly and perhaps more, more vulnerable and more conscious of these matters. And let's pray for our, our whole community. The boys and girls, we weren't able to have the meeting on Monday night. We weren't able to have the meeting last night with the children. But let's pray for that. Let's pray for those little ones that even though we don't have them these weeks, and may not be able to have them until the start of a new term, that we'll be able to keep some link with them and get the gospel to them. So many things to think through. So may the Lord help us tonight as we pray. And we'll seek the Lord together. Let's let me encourage as many as possible just to take time to pray. And um, with those who are watching at home, <coughs> and do the same and, and make this an opportunity for family worship. That will be a good thing. And we'll try and work this through in the weeks to come in the Lord's will as well. But let's seek the Lord together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the opportunity in the midst of troublesome times to turn to Thy Word and find comfort for our souls. We thank Thee tonight for the fact that Thou art our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. And Lord, we confess there have been times we have read that verse and read that psalm and we haven't felt ourselves to be in this kind of trouble before. And while we <coughs> sought to to seek that and see that verse in, in one angle, in one aspect. It takes on a whole new dimension in times like this. And we pray tonight that we would be able, by thy grace, to trust in thee, to cast our cares upon thee, to look to Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, to rest in thee. Lord, we are conscious we do not know what a day will bring forth. We do not know what restrictions or guidelines or directions will be placed upon us as a congregation or as individuals even. We pray, Lord, amidst all the uncertainty of it, that we would trust in thee, knowing that thou art able to carry us through these challenging situations that we face. We pray for this congregation tonight, that, Lord, you'll remember all the families connected with the work, yeah. all the little ones, all the young people, all the elderly people, Lord, who would have health issues already and would be nervous and seeking to stay at home. We pray for them, that, Lord, that would meet their needs tonight, encourage their hearts, strengthen them in the Lord, and, Lord, bless them. We pray that they would be even conscious of the prayers of thy people, remembering them before the throne of heavenly grace. And we pray, Father, for our, our wider denomination. We pray for our missionaries across the world. We thank, Lord, of the, the changes that will be made in various places as, as missionaries make their way back to the mission field or uh, changes are made in regard to their, their timetabling. We pray, Lord, that you'll guide them in all those various matters too. When we think of our community here in Oma and in this Tyrone area and all across the province, 
Lord, we think of the opportunities to, to serve Thee even in these days. And we pray that, Lord, that would speak to souls. There would be a, a mighty moving of Thy Spirit in these days. Lord, that would stir hearts. That would cause all the outreach that's been done in this area for years now to bear forth fruit even at this time. Lord, we ask that it may please Thee in the midst of these trials. It may please Thee to move in power in the souls of men and women. We pray, Lord, for those who are vulnerable, that Thou would keep Thy hand upon them. Lord, spare life, we pray. We ask that Thou would help us in these times. So visit us now with Your blessing. Help us in prayer. Pour out Thy Holy Spirit, Lord, upon us. We thank Thee for bringing us together. We pray for Thy help. As we have before thee now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.